Hi everyone, welcome back to a special edition of the Seattle Stitcher. This is gonna be my end of year whip parade. So 2022 is the very first year I started cross stitching and these are all the whips I've accumulated over my first year of stitching. I'm pretty proud of myself, just what I've been able to do in a year and how I've been able to grow in my stitching journey. And uh, I just wanna say, you know, thank you to all of you guys because not only was this my first year of stitching, but it also is my, you know, the first year that I produced these videos and put them out there to the world. And the community has welcomed me so warmly and I just couldn't be more thankful. So let's get started. I'm not going in any particular order, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go with like the stuff that I worked on recently and then I'm gonna open my whip drawer because I have a drawer and we'll get going so here is my first pattern this is the last thing I worked on and this is my Ann Thomas 1854 I love this piece it is just oh, it's so pretty I'm stitching it one over two on a 36 count spiced honey and I believe that's a color in cotton fabric. Yeah, I just double checked just to make sure. And here is my progress on her. So she is a beauty. I love this one. I love the pattern in general. It's so pretty, but one thing I particularly love with this one is I really love this fabric choice. It kind of reminds me of like what I thought the gingerbread by picture this plus would look like but the gingerbread by picture this plus is like slightly more pink toned and it's actually one that i did look at to to stitch on because it looks pretty similar to the cover but i ended up going with a spiced honey and i do not regret it it's so beautiful i really love this one so this has been a fun whip i've really enjoyed and i did decide to go with the dmc's for this one I just ordered more acrylic floss drops last night, actually. I ordered mine off of Amazon, so I'll link those below. And these are paper floss drops that I went ahead and made myself. But as you can see, none of them are torn or anything like that. But I'm pretty gentle with them, you know. I'm not, like, ripping the thread off as hard as I possibly can. I just used some embossed uh, scrapbooking paper because I typically find that, like, things that have this kind of metallic on them are a little bit of a sturdier material when it comes to paper. I don't know what it has to do with the process of it or the way that the it's applied. I just find that they don't rip quite as easy. So I like that. It's worked well. I just wrote on the back the DMC numbers, but like I said, I ordered more floss drops, so I will I'll swap them over once those come to me in the mail. I did like the slow shipping option because I'm not in a rush to get them. And Amazon right now, by the way, if you're an Amazon user, um, they'll give you like some credits if you choose a slower shipping option. So that's kind of cool. And this isn't a me made bag. I sewed up this bag, I think like in the spring of this year. So that's a fun one. My next project, this is also in a me made bag. I really like this one. I have a purple lining fabric on here. This is my Little House Needleworks the Suffrage Act. I really like these Little House Needleworks patterns. I just think they're so pretty. And I like that they're small. I'm using all the called for flosses. The only alteration I am making to the pattern is I'm making the bunting, instead of being the like Americana bunting uh, with the red, white, and blue, I'm swapping it to a more historically accurate Suffrage Act, which would be the Suffragette ribbons. And their ribbons Everything I've seen have either been a purple, white, and gold, or a purple, green, and gold, or no, sorry, a purple, green, and white. I went ahead and went with the purple, white, and gold option, so I'm swapping out my bunting for that. So I picked up this purple, which is also a classic color works. Uh, and then I think I also decided to go with sassy brass, which is a little bit of a brighter gold. I'm stitching this one over two on a 32 count picture this plus Ren. My apologies, I have not ironed any of these. <laughs> and here is my progress on this one. I love this fabric and I just love this piece overall. It's so cute and pretty. I cannot wait to get her finished because as you can see, it's very small. I think that it goes like maybe out to there and that's about it because I already have the suffrage in and then it act proclamated is what it says. So it's very tiny, but it's so cute. I can't, I can't wait to have it on the wall. I just love it. I love the lady, love her dress. Um, I really like the effect that the bricks have. 
And I am even liking stitching the one over two on the 32 count. Usually that can be a little sparse and primitive looking, but picture this plus with the dyeing process, as many other floss tubers have said, and I concur with is that the picture this plus is a little bit of a tighter weave. So uh, it's it works well to do, you know, the one over two. The next project I have is also in a me made bag. I sewed this one up, I want to say at the end of November, and it just has like these ribbon candies and these reindeer on the back with the vinyl front. This is my Lavender and Lace Spirit of Christmas. I'm stitching this two over two on a 28 count wheat Lugana. And this project, I did go ahead and use all the called for DMCs as well as the Crynex, so it's exactly as called for. And I still have the needle miner on this one. I haven't decided if I'm gonna pull the needle miner off because I know I won't pick this up until next December, but here's my progress. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's not even like I'm being like, oh, it's amazing, look at my stitching. No, my stitching isn't what's amazing. It's the, the way that the designer has put together the colors. Wow, it's just amazing. I really, really like these lavender and lace patterns. This is the first one I've ever stitched and I love it so much. I definitely wanna pick up more. I'll probably finish this one, this Spirit of Christmas. And there's one more lavender and lace. It is two kids and they're hanging ornaments on a Christmas tree and I can't find it in stock anywhere. I think it might be out of print. Um, and I'm so bummed because that is one pattern that I really, really want to kind of go adjacent to this one. But, I really like these lavender and laces. Yeah, I'm really enjoying that. It definitely pushes me to want to stitch a fancy lady maybe because I love this. It's, they're just awesome. Uh, the next one, this is actually a sow. So this is a stitch along that I'm doing with a couple of my stitching friends. So Bridget from Museum Stitcher and Alexis from Alexis underscore My Amazing World. I know I talk about them all the time. It's just like, I truly consider them like my stitchy besties. We, I love them so much. And Bridget had messaged the group saying that this Home for the Holidays booklet by Blackbird Designs, which is still in print, you can purchase on 123 Stitch, they have Christmas Garden, which is, um, or used to be an out of print Blackbird. And so we went ahead, Alexis and I, went ahead and purchased this pattern. I went ahead and grabbed all the called for flosses for it, which is all classic color works and gentle arts. They are very muted colors, so they're very pale in comparison to what they were when the pattern was originally stitched in 2011. So honestly, if you're thinking about stitching it and you really like the cover photo, I would personally do a conversion. So um, knowing that now, I definitely would have done a conversion, but I'm an idiot, so I just went ahead and bought everything as called for. <laughs> Not that I'm unhappy with it. I'm stitching this one over two on a 32 count uh, fiber on a whim cream and sugar and here is my progress I'm really happy with this like I said I I just wish that I would have I wish I would have made that conversion Bridget's conversion is beautiful it's so Christmassy and just lovely this is definitely a much softer and in my opinion it's not very Christmassy so I almost want to alter the image to not say Christmas garden along the bottom because then I could have it hung all year but I don't know it still has the reindeer in it and everything, so I'll probably just keep it as is. But yeah, I uh, I wanted to get the whole upper half of this finished before the Christmas season was over, but I would have had to have only stitched on this piece, and I felt like that would have been really boring <laughs> for you guys from watching my floss tube. So I decided to just put it away. I stitched on it a little bit more this past couple weeks, and only did a couple of days or um, well, evenings of stitching, and I put her away. So she's gonna be gone for the year and she'll come back out next December probably. I'm hoping to maybe work on this one tonight and get a complete page finished before my next floss tube, but we'll see, you know, we'll see. <laughs> I don't like to set any solid plans for myself, okay? <laughs> my next project, this is in a bag that Alexis made me um, from Alexis underscore My Amazing World. I love her bags. Her bags are so roomy, so I can fit everything in it. And this one, I am stitching the Teresa Kogut's Come to the Garden. I love this pattern. I saw someone stitching it. It's a sow on Instagram. It is um, Stitch Creek Teresa Kogut sow. And you can pick any of her patterns, but I saw one of my Instagram friends was stitching this one. I believe her name is Carol. She was stitching this one and I was obsessed. So I went and I kitted it up right away. I did do all of the called for flosses, which is a mix of DMCs. So you'll see the DMCs are on the acrylics and it's also 
of some weave dye works, gentle arts, and classic color works. <laughs> So a little bit of everything, but I love the pattern so much that I had to get the call for it. It's just stunning. I'm stitching it on a 36 count piece of Picture This Plus Fawn. Get my stitching facing the right way. This one I really enjoy stitching on. Every time I pull it out, I just don't want to put it away. And it's probably one of my favorite projects as far as fabric choice. This and one other, I'll show you guys eventually as I get to it, but I really like this one. She is beautiful. I actually pulled it out this week to work on it and realized I made a mistake in my counting down here. So I did have to actually cut out some of the stitching that I had previously. And after something like that happens, I always get annoyed with myself and I just put the project away, <laughs> which is probably terrible. So I saw the mistake, started chopping out the, the threads and went ahead and just put it away. So I like it. She's pretty, but I made the mistake and I'll go back and you know, fix her up. Maybe in the springtime. I don't know. This is kind of one that I, I like to stitch all year because the colors aren't super like, they're, they don't like scream one color to me. I just, yeah, I love it. Beautiful pattern. Um, Teresa Kogut's designs are amazing. I don't have very many of them to be honest, even though I really like her patterns, but we'll see. Um, the next project, this is an Ami made bag as well. And it has like some honeybee lining fabric. This is a sal that I did with Bridgen, the museum stitcher, and it is the Summer Quaker sal. I'm stitching this, uh, the, like the full Valdani floss over two on a 28 count doubloon by Picture This Plus. So I did get the called for Valdani flosses and I have them on my, you know, homemade floss drops, <laughs> which I, like I said, I ordered some more of those. The, the acrylic one so I can make some changes in my stash because I'm I want to store things a little bit nicer next year so I'm hoping to swap everything over in 2023 to the acrylic floss drops so I've got a good system and here is my progress oh man the that color is pretty accurate how it first showed up very pink how pretty is this I love this but the full like this full strand of Valdani it is so thick <laughs> <laughs> and it makes the stitching so dense on the fabric. I mean, it's very dense stitching. And although I like that, it, I don't know, at the same time, it can kind of be like laborious to, to stitch. And it's not my favorite. Uh, I think if I were to have, with now knowing this knowledge, if I were to have picked this up, I probably would have separated the threads and just stitched it like, two over two or even one over two, not on a 28 count, but maybe like a 30 or a 32 count, but she's still beautiful. I want to finish this. I definitely would keep it up all year round, even though it is very summery spring colors, but it's beautiful. I love it. I love the pattern. It's just such a good pattern. I feel like I didn't show you guys it long enough. It's so pretty. Yeah, I love it. I was like, my goal was just get over to this orange flower motif here because I am obsessed with that color variation. And I do love this basket down here as well. So I kind of started in the most boring, in my opinion, section, which was like this really barren <laughs> basket, but we'll see. I like this one. I love this fabric too. It's so pretty. I need to order another piece of this just because I feel like it would look really good with a sampler, like a floral sampler. So I need to order some more of that, but love it. So pretty. My next project, this is also in a me made bag. I made Bridget and I matching bags for this one. This is a sal that I am doing. I didn't start this sal, but I joined in on it. It's one that Bridget the Museum Stitcher and the 20 Minute Stitcher started, and both of them are great channels. I went ahead and uh, hopped in. Or, sorry, no, this isn't the one. They were a sal for a different one. I don't think we're selling this one. See, I'm already mixed up. <laughs> well, this is my Autumn Cloche by Hello Liz Matthews. I love this piece. It's so cute, so pretty. I'm obsessed. I realized yesterday, actually, after I cut the fabric like an idiot, that I think I cut the fabric margin too short on the bottom half. So here's my fabric. I already had a very little margin on the sidelines. So it probably wouldn't have worked regardless, but the bottom of the cloche actually comes outwards and then goes straight across. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. I think I'm just gonna have to have it straight down or have a shorter outward span. So we'll see what happens just because I won't be able to frame this. I'll have to put it on a sticky board or something of the sort, 
or give myself like a border. It just sucks because I actually had a big enough piece of this fabric. It is a 36 count the stitch me. I think it's not another sampler. I think. And um, it's a very beautiful fabric. I love it. The piece I had was big enough though. That's what kills me is that I totally should have stitched this the other way, like horizontally across the whole piece of fabric. So I would have had a lot of excess salvage room. But for some reason I started it this way. But whatever, we'll see what happens. I really wanted to get a lot more of this done, but I just didn't. I didn't feel motivated to work on it any longer. So I put it away after I finished like most of the outline of the cloche. So I'm at least happy with that. And I mean, so cute, the little mushroom and little bird guy here. I am doing this one over two with a Leo and Roxy conversion. My Leo and Roxy conversion, the DMC 844 was still the error on the conversion. So the color obsidian, which should have been DMC 3865, I went ahead and swapped for eggshell by Classic Colorworks because I had it in stash. So beautiful flosses, really enjoying working with these. I cannot wait to have this finished so I can actually use these flosses for a kitted up project that I have because I am excited about that one. So that's a good one. Uh, my next project, this is also in a me made bag. This fabric is from Gigi's Quilts in Yelm, Washington. You can call them, place orders over the phone. They also have an online store. I think you can shop there as well because I know a lot of people really liked this fabric. This is another Little House Needleworks pattern. You guys know I really like their, their literature based pieces. And this is the bookshelf. I'm stitching this on a 36 count Weeks Dye Works Gray, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, Weeks Dye Works Gray. And I'm stitching it one over two with the called for DMCs, including the like DMC Diamond that's the metallic up top. Really like this one. The fabric color to me doesn't look gray at all, so kind of a weird name, but I do really, I like it overall. I think it's gonna be a really pretty piece. I'm thinking, my idea was to hang it on this wall over here, but I feel like that's gonna be so hidden because my bookshelves are kind of in the corner of my living room. I might just hang it on a big wall that I have facing the other way. So yeah, I enjoy this one. It's pretty. Um, I love the, the way that the DMCs look together. I just feel like they're so pretty a pretty color palette. Oh, I love it. I'm like so amazed by designers who come up with these amazing color palettes. I could never do that. <laughs> I like second guess every color decision I've made in my life. So <laughs> my next project, this is a sal. This is a sal, um, the creepy baby sal. So stick with me here. <laughs> Jessica from Stitches of Sass. She had seen, as well as myself, we watched Kitchy Whips, Maggie, also an amazing YouTube channel, but <laughs> she had these Laddie and Lacey patterns by Leisure Arts. These are like older patterns. They're from 1988. They're out of print. I went ahead and went on Etsy and purchased these and I found them in a bundle. They were pretty cheap. I want to say like 15 bucks or less and um, super cute. Well, they are, right? They're very, they're cutesy with the geese and I mean, adorable. They look like, um, kind of like those dolls, those like porcelain dolls. Well, Maggie had the idea of turning them into like creepy versions of that, like Halloween versions. And uh, I was all on board for that, 100%. <laughs> so I am stitching this one with the call for DMCs and I'm making changes as I go. I decided to do a 18 count barnwood, which is a picture this plus fabric. This is probably one of the few projects I have on an Ada. So I picked up two pieces of this so that I could have one piece for Laddie and one piece for Lacey. The change I know right off the bat that I was gonna make was replacing the mud along the bottom of their boots here with like this red variegated DMC 115. So I've got that floss in here and that's the only change I've made so far because they were already so pale in skin tone and I'm using an even darker shade of fabric that I didn't need to lighten up their skin at all. I might darken the eyes in general um, just to make them a little bit creepier because I plan on hanging these up for Halloween. So I did start stitching this with Jessica and I started with Lacey. I think she started with Laddie and she started bottom up. I started top down with Lacey and I love it. This is a really good representation of the color of the fabric because I feel like you can see that it's more purple right now and that's spot on. It's slightly purple, slightly gray. It's a great, oh, such a good Halloween fabric. Highly recommend, 
Love this. I'm liking this pattern. I'm stitching it the one over one on the Ada, and I do wish I would have bought, I wish I would have bought um, a, like a larger count of Ada. I think this is 18 count. Yeah, 18 count. I kind of wish I would have done 14 and just done two, two over two. Cause now that I know the loop start method, I'm like, man, I can totally stitch two over two. <laughs> so uh, who knows? I, st I haven't gotten so far into her that I'm like, oh, I, I'm not gonna make any um, changes. It's like, I'm still at the beginnings of this project so I could make changes, but who knows? I already have the fabric and I don't know what else I would use it for, to be honest. So I've got this one. I don't really feel motivated to work on Halloween stuff currently. So we'll see what happens, but I really do like this and I look forward to having these, these guys done. I think they really will look so cool during Halloween. I'm thinking like oval frames, something vintage or like maybe those oval frames that have like the really thick gaudy, like, you know, almost damask looking, uh, something like that. I just want it to be over the top Halloween. <laughs> so in these bags, these all, my next projects will all be in these Amazon bags. I'll link them below. Um, they're pretty affordable to me. You can buy them in bulk and yeah, they work great. They're slightly waterproof, but the zippers are not. So just be mindful of that. This was a pride month start for me. And this is my Thea Gouverneur Lady and the Unicorn. This is the 2021 edition that has the linen. So this is the linen version, not the Ada version. Uh, the kit comes with the fabric, the DMC floss, as well as the, the needles. It came with John James needles, I wanna say. I think it did, I honestly can't remember. Um, so the only thing I needed to buy was a needle binder. So I went on one, two, three stitch and I just looked up like blue needle binder. And I believe this one was called Blue Agate. I don't know if it's in stock any longer, but Here's my progress on this one. Not very far, to be honest. It's one over two on like a 28 count linen. So it's very sparse stitching, but I actually really like it. And this weave, even though it says it's a 28 count, it's pretty tight. So it looks more like a, I don't know. It looks more like a 30 to me, but I really like this piece. It's gonna be massive, like huge piece. Oh, it's gonna be ginormous, but I love it. <laughs> so, um, it doesn't, so the DMCs, I do have a list of the DMCs for this Thea Gouverneur kit. So for the 2021 linen version of the Lady and Unicorn, I don't have a DMC list for any other kits because they're not the same. Like the symbols are not the same in all the kits. Um, and I've also heard that her Ada kits have different DMCs because the dye, jo the dye jobs on the Ada is slightly different. I don't know if that's true because I don't own any of the other kits. Like I'm not gonna buy this kit twice, one Ada, one regular, you know, I'm not gonna do that. So I, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. If you need extra flosses, she does allow you to purchase extra flosses from her website, but I believe it ships from overseas. So shipping and you have to, you know, you have to buy a whole pack. So that's pretty costly. I'm trying to be as like, like waste as least floss as possible while stitching on this one, just because I don't want to run out of floss, to be honest, because it was already like 100 and 122, 128 for the kit of this. Um, in my opinion, worth it, because I got a huge piece of linen. I mean, that alone is like a hundred bucks and 22 bucks would be like what's left over for the DMCs, right? Well, there's way more than that worth of DMCs in the kit. It's so much DMCs, it's ma and a massive amount. So well worth it. I'm not saying it's not worth it. The patterns are beautiful, really well done. I went ahead and took mine to Office Depot and I had them bind them into a spiral bound notebook. So that was just easier for me to flip through. So recommendations there. Um, the next project I have is the Prairie Schooler Trick or Treat. I really love these patterns. I'm stitching this one on the Called For fabric, which is a Wichelt's Lamb's Wool in a 32 count with the Called For DMCs. And here is my progress. I really love these patterns, but I wish that I was more aware of the kind of fabric this was and how much I just detest it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to be that dramatic, but it really shreds my DMCs. Sorry if you can hear Banks in the background. He's a kitten, okay? <laughs> um, but the, this fabric, it's shredding my DMCs. I feel like I'm wasting so much because I'm having to clip off like inch after inch because it just gets completely shredded apart. 
but I'm determined to finish these through. I have four of them in total, like four of these Prairie Schoolers that are the Halloween themed ones. And I did buy a, per a piece of the, the witch olds for every single one of them. So we're pushing through. I think the real issue is that I'm stitching it two over two. And I think these patterns are just, they're not ideal for, or sorry, I shouldn't say pattern, but the, the fabric itself is not ideal for a two over two. The 32 count, I don't know what it is about that witch olds, but it is very tight. Like it's more like a 36 in my opinion. And I'm not much of a stitcher for two over two on 36. Um, it just, it's not fun to stitch that way to me, you know? <laughs> we all have our opinions and that's mine. So again, in an Amazon bag, this is one that I'm definitely gonna finish in the new year. And this is my cross stitch kit that my sister purchased for me. So this is for her. It's a June Bug and Darling kit called Rosy Chaos. You can see it's kind of like an abstract, rosy, floral motif and you do get everything you get the embroidery the um the hoop i mean the backing fabric the batting for inside the linen two needles i mean you get everything so it's a really cool kit great deal for what it is here are the colors to the dmc's because it is dmc's and so pretty just a beautiful color palette my sister has a pretty big home library she is lost in paperbacks if you're looking for like a good book talk or a good um, Instagram that has to do with books lost in paperbacks is her channel or her on all of her all of her online resources but here is the project so far so as you can see I am almost done I only have a little bit of stitching left on this one and this is a 14 count Ada I don't know the color because again it came in the kit and the only thing I added was a needle minder to hold my needle and pretty much all of my needle minders, every single one of them has been from Mad for Minders. The only one that wasn't from Mad for Minders was the one from 123 Stitch on my Lady and Unicorn. But yeah, I really like this. Honestly, when I stitch on it for a long time, I just get so lost in where I am because it is pretty abstract. I feel like it, even from afar, it's like, is that flowers? <laughs> but it is really pretty and I love the design. Um, I'm gonna keep the pattern for sure and probably stitch myself one, but this is one I wanna finish in January so I can get it mailed back off to her. Let's see, my next project here, this is my Lady Halloween by Jardine Privé. I am just stitching this one with DMC 310 on a 28 count smoky white, just smoky white swipe art linen. And I'm stitching it two over two. And here is that one. I love this one. It's so cute. There are a couple of areas where I realize now that I see why you need the other shades. I might pick up a gray DMC and to help differentiate the shades because there's like some apothecary jars in the pattern. And that's the only area where I felt like, oh, I might need two shades. So I might do a lighter gray just to get the shading right. But everywhere else, I don't feel like I needed the other shades. So I went ahead and just did all black and I really like the choice so far. I'm loving the way this looks. I think it looks really good on this smoky white. And every time I pull this out, it makes me realize how much I liked this fabric. It's so enjoyable to stitch on. And you know, those white art bases is what a lot of um, dyers use that hand dye their own fabrics. And it's just great linen, you know? So can't complain there. I definitely want to get her at least two pages done in 2023. That's my my goal. I would I would like to get this one further along because I do I like that project. It's a super cute one. My next project is Miss Bingley's Library by Plum Street Samplers. Oops, upside down, of course. Uh, the only changes I made on this one are the flag I made into a pride flag and her cup I made it into a green cup because Green is like the Starbucks color. And if you didn't know, Starbucks was, it was started in Seattle. And so it's just kind of like synonymous with Washington State. And I decided to go ahead and swap out her cup with the green, but the green was already in the pattern as the vines. So didn't have to purchase anything extra. And the DMCs I, is what I used to get the pride flag. And I just had DMCs in stash. So I really like this one. I do want to get this one finished for the new year. I am, even though you can't see the, the stitching for the house, I have a few rows of the white stitches actually done on this one. And disappointingly, it doesn't show up very well in my fabric, but I'm just going to back stitch it and leave it as is. Not only to mention, but after you put in the, the windows and the shutters and everything, your brain's going to be like, that's a house, you know, even if you can't see the house very well. <laughs> I think in person it'll show up a little bit better than it does on camera, but I still like the project. I want to get it finished in 2023. That is my goal. <laughs> and um, I'll definitely 
in my next floss tube, which will be on Thursday, I will definitely talk about my 12 for 12 because I'm going to do 12 whips actually 11 whips and one new start at the like midnight stroke. So this is probably going to be on there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I'll talk about it in my floss too. <laughs> my next project, this is a recent start in December here for me. And the last start of 2022, this is my Stacy Nash Primitives Christmas at Hollyberry Farm love this pattern. I did make some um, pretty creative changes with this one. So she has a little like, I don't know, like a little synopsis about the pattern, right? And she says that if she were to have stitched it in now times with flosses, that instead of using walnut for the roof, she would have used carriage black. So I went ahead and purchased carriage black. And then the red mulberry, I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. So I went ahead and swapped it out for Weeks Dye Works Cayenne. And I'm happy with that change. The biggest change I made is by swapping the fabric. I decided to do Bestitch Me's Gray Magic. And I also took out all of the, the letters. There was two alphabets up at the top of this. And I went ahead and just took those right out because I didn't feel like they were necessary. So it's a bit different, but I'm really happy with this. I'm just so happy with the color choice. This and my, my Teresa Kogut Come to the Garden are my absolute favorite color choices. I particularly love this one because I feel like it was more creative on my end and I don't feel like I'm the most creative person. I'm really good at following a pattern, but that's about it, you know? <laughs> so I'm happy with myself here. I love the pop of color. I like this red. I know it just says Merry Christ. I didn't, I didn't even finish Christmas. I'm terrible. <laughs> But this one, I'm definitely, I've already taken the needle and the needle minder out. I finished the floss that I had on here and snipped it and I put it away because I'm not going to bring this one out until 2023's Christmas. I'm imagining. I don't know. I don't know because if I finish the Christmas, so if I just do, you know, MAS on here, I'm like, maybe I will pull it out because it'd kind of be like just stitching a, you know, a house. So maybe, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Future Megan. Who knows what she's doing, okay? <laughs> and then these ones are in the small Amazon bags, just so you're aware. So the past few projects, if the pattern is this size, I definitely use these small bags. I do not regret accidentally purchasing them at all. And they're, they're even more affordable than the larger ones. And they match, you know, they match what I already have in stash. And I like that, I mean. <laughs> Here, this is the project that Bridge and the 20 Minute Stitcher. So the Museum Stitcher and the 20 Minute Stitcher, they came together and started a style. It is the Halloween Quaker style. And this is uh, Lila Studios Halloween Quaker. Love this pattern. It is so cute. I'm stitching this one over two with all the called for flosses, which are fancy flosses, except for DMC 310. That's the only like regular, um, you can buy it like a regular big box store, but all the rest of them here, Classic Color Works, they are fabulous. And I'm stitching this on a 32 count Meyer by Picture This Plus. I love this one. Here is my progress. Oh, I love it so much. It's just so fun and I love this fabric. Oh, it's so good. I just can't wait to get further along on this one. This is one that I might work on throughout the year. Even though it's obviously Halloween, I love Halloween. You guys know that's my favorite time of the year. It's my favorite season. I like Christmas, but honestly, the older I get, the more stressful Christmas has gotten for me because I have a lot more events going on, you know, people who want to see my daughter and it just, it gets really stressful. <laughs> so Halloween is like the one time a year where I just plan our outfits. I buy what is needed for those outfits and then boom, I'm done, <laughs> you know? So I love it. Um, I really like this one. I think, I think this is one that I might work on throughout the year, but like I said, I don't like, I don't like setting things in stone. All right, what's in here? Here we are. Matters Choice by Caritas Sampling. I am using the NPI Silk uh, is Atlantic Blue, and I'm stitching this one over two on a 36 count copper kettle. It's kind of like the house brand linen. There's no name for the linen. It's just in my LNS thread needle street. <laughs> and here is my progress. This is one that I like, but I just don't get excited about stitching on it. I just like the finished object. <laughs> and I love the color contrast of the, the MPI and the copper kettle. It's beautiful, but 
yeah, it's one that I'm just like not excited about. So I don't know when I'll pull this one out again. I was hoping honestly to get much further along on it in 2022, but it just didn't happen. I like to start new things. I like having all these whips. It's super fun for me. And if I don't feel the pull to stitch on something in the moment, I'm okay with that. You know, off with her, it's fine. She can sit in my drawer for three months, who cares? <laughs> and that, oh my goodness, that is actually the final whip. Oh, and I'm making good time. So I did actually, before I filmed this video, yesterday I went through all of my projects and I cut up all the extra fabric from all of my pieces. That way I'm not wasting any more fabric going into the new year. So I feel great about that. The other thing that I did was I went through my projects and I thought to myself, is there anything that I'm looking at right now that I know I don't want to stitch. Not because I don't like the pattern, but maybe. And just like, do you wanna stitch on this fabric, Megan? Do you actually wanna use these, you know, flosses? Are you happy with this decision? And I did decide to pull one project from all of my projects that I have shown you guys. And that is actually my Halloween at Hawthorne Hollow. If you've been watching me from the beginning, you'll know my tale of woe with her. I love the pattern and I had stitched it originally on a 40 count. I accidentally cut the thread of my fabric and I wasn't able to salvage it. I flipped it, started stitching it on the other side and then I just got so tired of stitching on that fabric. I, I didn't want to stitch on it anymore. It wasn't enjoyable and so got rid of her and I accidentally purchased a piece of fabric from Picture This Plus on 123 Stitch and it was like a crystal based linen. I really love the fabric. It's gonna be a great piece, but for a Christmas piece, not for Halloween. And I also don't wanna do this on a, a like a 28 count or a 32 count. I wanna stitch Halloween at Hawthorne Hollow on a 36 or a 40 count, one over two. So I'm in the market looking for some fabrics. I'll decide when I decide. And if I see the perfect piece, I'll definitely pick it up. I have a couple in my cart right now from 123 Stitch. I'm kind of looking at Hollis Hands Creates. You guys know I love her Etsy store. And you know, I'm looking, but I'm not like super in the mood to stitch on, on Halloween stuff at the very moment. So I'm taking my time, but that is the only project going in to the new year that I'm just going to shelf. Um, I'm gonna cut the fabric probably today and call it a quits with that one, you know? I'm super happy with the projects that I have. And like I said in the beginning, I'm just so happy with uh, what I've been able to do in this year. And also just being part of this community. I can't stress it enough because it's just been so much fun. You know, I'm such a new stitcher that I didn't ever think making a floss tube would would be successful in any kind of way <laughs> or that anyone would even watch because I don't know what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> but here we are <laughs> like seven months later and I'm still going strong. So thank you guys so much. It's been an amazing year with you all. I literally have made some of the most amazing friends through this community and it's just been wonderful. So happy new year to you all. I hope you guys had a great holiday season. And uh, if you don't celebrate anything during this season, I hope that you enjoyed a cozy time of year and that something you found brought you joy and happiness, as much joy and happiness as I have felt throughout this year, stitching on all these things and, you know, making new friends with you all. So thank you so much. Uh, have a wonderful day and I will catch you probably later this week for a regular floss tube. Bye guys. how like brands work, you know? Can I show this brand? I don't know. I'll show it if they sponsor me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> or not. <sighs> oh, it's cold.